You say this morning you're targeting 5% sales growth this year. You cite Asia and you talk a lot about life sciences. Is that strong sales performance going to be a feature of the other parts of the business in Asia, healthcare, performance materials, or is this all about life science? Good morning. Um, so it is indeed uh, affecting all of the business sectors of, of the group. Asia is at the moment a very dynamic dynamic market for us. Um, life science, of course, is one of the growth drivers, but also um, Asia performs currently very, very well in performance materials. And here, especially China, uh, China and Taiwan are very strong growth drivers for us. And, what, and how far ahead of the other parts of the business is the life science story for you? Just what, what is so exciting about life sciences for Merck at the moment? Now, um, we have a very good market dynamic in life science. Um, it is fueled by a strong uh, demand in uh, monoclonal antibodies, also the biologics markets, the volumes are, are growing. Um, Asia shows a lot of dynamics, especially China, as I've mentioned. So overall, we can see almost no weak signals in the life science markets. And this is true for Asia, but also for all other regions and across our entire portfolio. Uh, so far this year, Mr. Kundit, Matt Miller here in Berlin, so far this year you've agreed to buy two different semiconductor companies. I wonder how much this adds to that division in terms of revenue and if you think further acquisitions are necessary there. Um, <clears throat> so we have, we have signed uh, to acquire the zoo materials in, in, April, in April this year and um, this will lift up the semiconductor share in our performance materials portfolio to roughly 50% and will lift up the share of performance materials in the group to the high 20s in, the, in terms of percentages. Um, so it will actually support our overall um, portfolio, positive portfolio dynamic that we will be able to return in 2020 to a stable top line growth trajectory. And that will also contribute positively as it is accretive to the group to our target that we will be able to maintain the EBITDA margin of uh, around 30% going forward. That's a decent boost to the performance materials uh, segment. I think it was under, under 20 now, about 17%. And you have warned that the liquid crystal market in China wouldn't be um, booming forever. Do you think that this semiconductor growth then makes up for that? I mean, uh, uh, you, you said you expect even higher percentage, 20, 20 or more. Um, is that going to be stable going forward because of the semiconductor additions? Um, so we actually believe, or indeed, the, um, the purpose is to rebalance a little bit the portfolio dynamics in performance materials and to reduce the dependency on liquid crystals. Um, as we have, or as we believe that the growth trends in the semiconductor industry are sustainable, uh, we believe this is a very attractive business field for us, and that is the reason why we were looking predominantly in that area for the next M&A move. So in a nutshell, yes, we believe that semiconductors will add positively in the future to our top line growth momentum, as well as uh, will have an accretive effect on our margins going forward. And let me ask you about the healthcare side, Marcus. Uh, one of the realities you'll face, of course, is around rebif and uh, the multiple sclerosis treatments. What can you offer uh, as as we as we as we look ahead, sort of post rebif? I know that Mavenclad has been given U.S. clearance. Will it ever reach the heights of rebif, though? Um, I think, yeah, so the, the answer was a little bit embedded in your question. So when we look, so yes, you're right. We uh, continue to believe that Rebif is going to decline also in the, in the future, but uh, only in line with the overall interference segment. So within the interference segment, we believe that we can keep market shares stable or even slightly increase market shares going forward. Um, the big compensating factor for the Rebif decline is indeed the sales compensation from our um, newly approved products. And here, of course, Mavenclad is to be named first and foremost. We have uh, 
uh, in March received the FDA approval for uh, for the United States, and together with Europe, we now see or believe to reach a peak sales potential between 1 billion and 1.4 billion euro. So this is, I think, um, a good contribution for the for the decline in Rebif.